Hi again, it's Jason from Fraser Valley Rose Farm and I took out a project this week to make a do-it-yourself germination chamber. I want to show you the results because it turned out great. It's in this mysterious box back here. Uh, nothing mysterious about it. It is in other times my flower cooler. For in, during the year we take cut flowers around the farm. We can put it in buckets inside there and it keeps them cooler longer. It's rigged up for that. One thing that made it really adaptable for this purpose is it's insulated. So when I put the heaters in there and the humidifier in there it made a great seedling germination chamber. Now I hope you'll stick around for this video, not just for the do-it-yourself portion of it, but just for general information about how to start seedlings and how to start seedlings consistently and quickly. That's the main thing here is that you get full germination out of your seedling package and you get the full tray ready all at once rather than some coming up at one point and some coming up at another. The way you get that is with a good consistent temperature and humidity during those early stages. Let me show you. Well, this is the view you're probably more familiar with of our farm and hidden away in a corner here, swing all the way around at the house. I have this sneaky entrance where I do a lot of my seed starting and indoor propagation early in the year. That's where you'll find our flower cooler. I've just pulled off the top lid panels for a minute here just to give you a better view because I want you to have a look at the box itself. Over on this end here you'll see a controller and actually there's an air conditioner installed there. So this is thermostatically controlled during the summer season to keep this box somewhere in the range of I choose about six degrees Celsius. That keeps the flowers fresher longer. Uh, now what you won't see here is that these side walls of the boxes, the front, the bottom, the sides, are constructed with rigid insulation. I may pull off a side here so that you get to have a look here, but it actually creates quite a good insulation layer here so I can cool it down in here and it stays cool or for this purpose I can warm it up in here and it stays warm. The modifications I made here were really quite minimal. All I did was take regular closet shelving brackets and shelves and place them along the back wall here and then I'm heating it with a couple of ceramic bulbs which I will show you here and I'm maintaining the humidity with a small humidifier. The result is that it's maintaining a constant 25 degrees Celsius in here and uh, it is also maintaining 80% humidity at least I've set that as the minimum. It actually doesn't have to come on all that much the humidifier. You can catch a little glimpse of the ceramic bulb at the bottom there and I'll give you a close-up view of that as well. But the humidifier doesn't have to come on very often because the seedling trays come in there with a fair amount of moisture in the soil already. So once I close that lid, it actually does get quite, um, quite close in there. Here's the nifty one-piece controller that I'll be using to control the temperature and humidity inside the germination chamber. You can see here, this piece here I can unwind, is the temperature and humidity probe that will feed the information back to the controller here. I can set the set points and then over here on this piece you can see that it has outlets. Hang on so you get a better look there. It has outlets for humidity and temperature so that when it falls below my set point, it will either turn on the temperature outlet or it will turn on the humidity outlet and run the appliances that will bring that back up for me. So let's get a look at the controller installed here. And you can see currently, as I open it up here, it's sitting at about 23 and a half degrees uh, Celsius. And actually probably get some idea of how humid it is in here by how the camera lens just fogged up there and you can see that that thing is hooked up to a temperature probe that I've got back here over by the uh, not not running air conditioning system and then it's wired to the devices like this one the humidifier and of course the heat lamps that I have installed over here that are putting heat into it to bring it up to those set points and there it is and the only danger I have in here of course and it's a little bit better now that we have um, that we have the humidifier in there but you can see that the soil up here will tend to dry out a little bit over time so I may have to pull some of those out and get them uh, uh, misting but also you can see I have to watch because I have germination in here and as soon as I have consistent germination within a tray I want to get that out and start giving it some light and some lower temperatures as I will show you. 
Now I want to be really clear up front here that you actually don't need anything of this scale if you're just starting seeds for your home purposes. Uh, an electronic controller makes it easier, but you can do this with the basic combination of a seedling heating tray and a dome, and you'll see those listed all the time on Amazon. I didn't want to buy 12 or 16 or 20 of those uh, to run them for this purpose. It, for me, it makes a lot more sense to do it in one area here with one set of heaters and one temperature controller. But certainly if you're just doing one or two or four trays at a time, you can definitely find seedling heating mats of that size. And in terms of covering them, yes, the domes are nice because they light in, but also a black plastic garbage bag just over them will take care of a lot of that keeping that humidity down while the seeds are starting to crack. Now, when I put out my seedling chart uh, last year and I talked about what the conditions should be for this germination stage, what I said is that it should take somewhere in the range of seven to 10 days on average to get your seedlings to germinate. If you are indeed keeping perfect germination and temperatures sort of in that optimum range, you might expect it to be a little bit shorter than that. I have been finding since I've been using this last week that some of the seeds have been cracking almost immediately, like five days in, I come in and I've got consistent germination on a full tray or at least one variety in the tray and I'll show you some of those. So you do have to keep an eye on it because if you have them in the dark like that and they're germinated, you really don't want to leave them in there for a couple or three or four days in complete darkness searching for the light, they will start to stretch and that's the, uh, the thing you want to avoid. You want to move them into that next stage on the chart, which is that sort of early development stage where they will need some light, where you'll start to lower the temperature and the humidity to try to keep them sturdy and get some air movement on them to get them the perfect development. These are some trays that I've already pulled out and again from only five or six days ago and you can see that this one has very consistent germination all across the different cells there and so that's the stage at which I want to take them out. They're starting to show a little bit of green, they've got their cotyledons opening up and I actually want to give them some access to light now and start to reduce that temperature. Uh, again not too low but going down from, and I'll show you on the chart here, going down from that germination temperature between say 24 and 28 degrees Celsius, this would be good to take it down to about 18 degrees Celsius, sort of an early growing temperature and to that end we've started to set up a table here for graduating those seedlings. And we have to start thinking about capacity here because if that germination chamber can take 12 trays at a time and it's germinating them as fast as five to seven days, in that case, I'm gonna need every week, I'm gonna need an extra 12 trays to put out here. So I have to have room for over the next, say four weeks to put something like 40, eight trays out on this table and into the bench in the greenhouse. So I have to start thinking about the next step right now. And I have a follow-up video on kind of a novel way that I'm heating this bench in here. I'll show you that shortly. I wanted to give you the cost details of the project here just as I did it. The racks and shelves ended up being the most expensive thing. Those standards, those, those brackets and the shelves were in the range of about $100. I like them a lot though because I can continue to add to those standards. I have room in there to go up to say 24 on that one side of the cooler and I could even populate the other side of the cooler if I wanted to. So it gives me the ability to scale up all the way that I want to. Maybe I'm dreaming about how much I might need but uh, I could go up to 24, 48 and Side of this cooler that's no problem. Uh, the reptile bulbs that I'm heating it with, those ceramic bulbs, those were only about $20. The controller itself was somewhere around $50. Now I didn't pay for that, that was provided me for free from the supplier and thank you very much to them for, for doing that. So it didn't cost me anything but in total what we're talking about here is somewhere in the range of $170 in direct costs. The little humidifier I had on hand so same with the lamp standards and of course I had the cooler here as well. The thing that I want to say about this and reiterate is that obviously my solution doesn't necessarily need to be your solution. It isn't one of those projects. I mean, it only made sense for me because I had some of those things on hand. I already had this thing built. Whereas I've seen wonderful innovation online of people who make this out of an old refrigerator. That's one way I've seen it done. People making it out of laundry racks, uh, people making it out of just homemade wood and covering it with poly. There's lots and lots of ways to do this. And it's one of the things I love about 
gardeners is that they will always find the most sensible way to do something and at the lowest cost for their circumstance and for the amount of trays that they will need. So that's fantastic. I, I guess the one thing I would reiterate is that this is not going to be up for 52 weeks a year. So don't you don't have to overbuild it. Some people might ask me, well, what about the wood inside of there? Isn't it going to swell up or rot? I'm going to have it at high humidities here uh, for about four weeks for this germination period. And then after that, I'll probably turn it off for a while and then I'll use it for as a flower cooler later in the year. And it actually holds a bit of humidity at that time too. So far, uh, this o OBS or OSB wood has not caused any problem with th that level of humidity. It seems to vent fairly nicely. But in your own project, obviously don't overbuild for something you're only going to use for four or six weeks out of the year. Try to keep it low key and in scale and at the cost that makes sense for you and your gardening. All right, thanks so much for watching. And if you have any questions about this project, I've probably left some details out. Feel free to drop those in the questions below.